We are organizing a, uh, a symposium on autonomic disorders in sleep medicine, uh, which is a uh, underrepresented portion of um, the sleep medicine fields, but uh, it's actually a very common uh, comorbidity in a lot of sleep disorders. And um, the corollary, I think, we see uh, in primary autonomic disorders a very high percentage of patients uh, with sleep disruption and comorbid sleep disorders. So there's a very tight kind of bi-directional link with these two fields. Sleep is not typically thought of as an autonomic function, but uh, it, it very much is an autonomic function. It's autonomic, we mean functions that are automatic that we don't have to think about, like breathing or blood pressure or heart rate regulation. Uh, so sleep is, um, in essence, a truly autonomic function. Uh, we're, we're doing it unconsciously. Uh, so a lot of the disorders that disrupt sleep also affect the other, other autonomic functions, like heart rate regulation, blood pressure. Um, for instance, one of the most common sleep disorders, obstructive sleep apnea has a, a very high prevalence of autonomic dysfunction with elevated uh, blood pressure and increased risk of heart disease and um, arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. These are all autonomic uh, triggered events. Um, on sort of the flip side, when we see primary disorders of autonomic dysfunction like postural tachycardia syndrome uh, or REM sleep behavior disorder with Parkinson's disease, uh, almost all of these patients have sleep disruption or sleep disorders. Um, so some of that may be because of where the um, centers of control are in the brain and the brainstem. The sleep centers are very tightly uh, linked and in close proximity to the autonomic centers. So any lesion that's in one will commonly affect the other. But there's a um, kind of complex neuroanatomical circuits going on that link these two systems. So I think the key in, uh, in thinking about autonomic symptoms or disorders in patients with sleep problems is, uh, is really just asking the questions. So um, a lot of patients with sleep apnea, for instance, or even someone who snores um, may have increased uh, you know, blood pressure, uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, these sorts of things are, are probably linked to, in some way to, to the sleep disruption or, for in, in this case, sleep apnea. Uh, in patients with, for instance, uh, hypersomnia, so more of a primary neurological disorder, uh, even though the patients may not really describe these symptoms, a lot of them do have daytime um, symptoms of autonomic impairment, um, elevated heart rates or uh, lower blood pressures when they stand, sort of orthostatic symptoms. Some of them may faint, but these aren't common uh, symptoms that patients are describing in a sleep visit, and, and they're not common questions that you know most physicians or even neurologists will ask. So. Uh, constipation, urinary changes, feeling lightheaded, sweating abnormalities. These are all common symptoms, but they're just not ones that we, that we frequently ask in, a, in the history. Some medications, um, like antidepressants, uh, can commonly cause or exacerbate some of these autonomic symptoms, like the, the fast heart rate and, uh, and, and these sort of sympathetic uh, symptoms. Um, but there, there aren't uh, too many medications that uh, will you know, primarily cause the, the autonomic problems. Uh, and some patients, if they have drop in blood pressure when they stand, you know, orthostatic hypotension, there are a host of medications that can make that worse. Those are mostly the, uh, in the Parkinson's group, the, you know, alpha-synucleinopathies. The sleep connection there is, is usually REM sleep behavior disorder. So, you know, in those patients, um, if they're complaining of lightheadedness or when they stand or sometimes even fatigue that's related to, to standing, uh, we always want to make sure their blood pressure is not dropping and then kind of make sure that they're not on any medications that can make that worse. I think this is a, a very interesting uh, kind of overlap field, um, autonomic and sleep medicine, and uh, it's something that's extremely common in patients, but it's um, something that's not been um, studied extensively. Part of that is I think it's because it's it's difficult to measure some of these functions while patients are sleeping. Um, there's a host of other factors that can affect um, you know these automatic regulations of our body, but uh, I think it just all comes back to just the concept of you know, homeostasis in our bodies to have good, you know, healthy functioning of everything. We have to get good sleep, you know, exercise is important and the kind of circadian 24-hour cycle that all our bodies crave. If that is disrupted, then patient's sleep will get affected and usually their autonomic system will get affected too. So it's a very tight and interesting overlap, I think.